Hi, it's Terry at D-Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you the advantages of installing a D-Lab K2 push-to-talk system in a Johnson Challenger transmitter. The Johnson Challenger is a cool vintage transmitter. It features AM and CW operation 80 through 10 plus 6 meters. The transmitter has a few design issues which I never understood. Number one, the transmitter operates with a crystal as shown here or VFO. To run the crystal you simply plug in to the indicated pins on this 8 pin opto socket. To run the VF122 VFO the manual explains that you have to modify the opto connector plus integrate the coax lead into this connector to make connections to those crystal pins. Not really my preference so I have elected to add an RCA jack to the VFO signal connection and this allows for direct connection of the VF122 with no mods required. So number two, the function switch. The layout is awkward. To tune or spot your frequency you have to go through the AM mode which keys the transmitter. I'm currently in standby to get to tune I have to go through phone. On a standard Johnson transmitter, they have a separate switch for VFO zeroing. Let me demonstrate this issue. Alright, for this demonstration, I have a receiver set up close to the same frequency as the VFO. So let's say you wanted to spot your VFO to that receiver. I'm in standby. I need to go to tune. Here we go. I just put out a 10 watt signal. Now I'm in tune. Back to standby. So every time I go to spot, I'm throwing a carrier out on the air. The only way to eliminate this problem is to add a push to talk circuit. So the third problem, which I'll show you once I get the transmitter back into the shop, is this transmitter does not have a rear output jack for controlling a Dow key antenna relay. This makes operating with a receiver very difficult. So what did they intend for this transmitter to be used in its stock configuration? I have no idea. Once again, a push to talk circuit will solve this issue. The Johnson Challenger manual shows the addition of a push to talk system in great detail. It allows for a standard microphone connector. It has a switched 120 volt AC socket for your antenna relay and it kills the high voltage for tune operation. The only issue is is they controlled that relay coil with a tap off of the high voltage so you have hazardous voltage present inside your microphone. So to eliminate that problem I'm going to install the modern system which is D-Lab K2 push to talk module. So let's get this thing off the radio bench and on to the D-Lab bench. Alright here's the rear of the Challenger I'm getting ready to install the two pin switched AC connector. This will control the Dow key relay. And that will go right there. Those are the dimensions per the Johnson manual. This is my microphone input, TRS jack. This is the RF output. And there is where you plug in your Morse code key. All right, I'm gonna get this drilled and get the push to talk underway. All right, the new two pin connector is installed. I have the K2 module gluing on the chassis. First step of the procedure is to remove this 40K resistor from pin 2 of SW3A. And we're going to take that lead off and swing it over here to pin 3 of one of the output tubes. Alright, the K2 module installation is complete into the Challenger. I'll provide an up to date diagram in case you decide to install one of these into your radio. There's an additional resistor and capacitor that I installed and that's to help stabilize the high voltage. That will be included in the diagram also. Alright, it's test time. Right, here we go. Initial test of the push to talk module in the Challenger. So I'm at standby at this point. If I go to phone, I have no output. Key the mic. There she is. Now if I go to CW, it'll key the module directly because this switch is activating the push to talk. There's my output. 
Now if I go to tune position, and I'm going to go through phone, you'll see no output. And there is tune. So it's working exactly as I hoped. So the K2 module had one set of unused contacts, so I elected to install an RCA jack on the back of the transmitter. So when the module keys, this jack will switch to ground, so you can use that to maybe activate an external amplifier. Alright, let's check those rear jacks and make sure they're operating. So first I'll put the transmitter in phone, and we're going to be looking for 120 volts AC on the meter, and then we'll check the little RCA jack and make sure that's going to ground. Okay, the Challenger is in phone mode. I'm going to key it up. We should see 120 on the meter. And we do. So that is the voltage that would feed the coil of your dial key relay. Let's check it in CW. I'm in standby. I'm going to switch to CW. There it is. And it's off. Alright, let's check the RCA jack now. All right, we're connected to the RCA jack. I'm in CW mode here, standby. And there's transmit. Let's check in the phone. I'm in phone, I'm key the mic. Working as intended. Okay, this is a test of the Johnson Challenger transmitter after installation of the D-Lab K2 push-to-talk module. So now this Challenger actually works like a real transmitter should. So I've teamed it up with a Drake 2B and we have the VFO 122 for its frequency input. So I'm at my typical standby 7.115 megahertz. Let's go into tune. All right, we're on frequency. Let's send a CQ. Now when I flip to CW, it actually has a dial key relay, which is going to change over the antenna, so you'll hear that. Initially, this didn't have that feature. So it's nice because now you don't have to flip switches on your receiver between transmit and receive. Here we go. of the radio we are on the 40 meter band. This transmitter has the D-Lab push to talk module installed so I can actually key it with the microphone. So there is our plate current. We're only putting out about 20 watts screen modulated. Okay, So I can dip the plate and now let's listen to it on the 173. Hello. Of course, we've got to deal with feedback here, but, uh, hello, one, two, three, four, yeah, hello, this is N6TLU testing the Johnson Challenger transmitter, screen modulation, so the So if you'd like to add a K2 module to your Johnson Challenger, D-Lab will provide you a line diagram and simplified instructions for the install. Drop me a line, we'll make it happen.